hello students welcome back to my online class today we will read the fifth part of our lesson the tiger king written by kalki so we have seen in our previous lectures that how the king had made up his mind to kill the 100 tiger as he wanted to make the prophecy of the astrologer false and also the astrologer to accepted the challenge of the king and admitted that if the king will be able to kill the 100 tiger then he will also uh, tear all the pages of his uh, astrology book and set it to fire similarly we have seen how intelligently he saved his kingdom from the fury of the british official now uh, let's move through the fifth section fifth and the last section the maharaja maharaja's anxiety reached fever pitch when there remained just one tiger to achieve his tally of 100 now as the king is very near to his target so far he had killed 99 tigers and now he was much um, upset of achieving his goal he had this one thought during the day and the same dream at night by this time the tiger farms had run dry even in his father in law's kingdom so day and night he was simply dreaming of achieving his goal but uh, even in his father in law's kingdom there was not a single tiger found it became impossible to locate tigers anywhere yet only one more was needed but uh, throughout the kingdom uh, there was not a single tiger tiger to be found which increased his anxiety and he became restless if he could kill just that one single beast the maharaja would have no fears left he could give up tiger hunting altogether now uh the tiger thought that if he could be able to kill the 100 tiger one single more tiger then uh he would fulfill his aim and then after he would never uh kill any more tigers but he had to be extremely careful with that last tiger what had the late chief astrologer said even after killing 99 tigers the maharaja should be aware of the 100th true enough the tiger was a savage beast after all one had to be wary of it but where was that 100 tiger to be found but as the astrologer had already warned the king to be careful from the 100 tiger and also as he was very near to his uh aim so he was very um scared and also very upset of a uh, killing the 100 tiger moreover the tiger itself is a savage beast a very fearful fearful animal so uh the ta- the king had a doubt of killing the hundred tiger but not a single tiger was found now the king was very upset and disturbed that where could he find his last target thus the maharaja was sunk in gloom but soon came the happy news which dispelled that gloom in his own state sheeps began to disappear frequently from a hillside village now thinking about this 
problem the king felt very sad he was very unhappy at the very thought of killing the hundred tiger and as not a single tiger was found anywhere not spotted anywhere by his people but his gloom disappeared when uh, he learnt a news that sheep were disappearing from the hillside it means there may be possibility of a tiger so the king became happy it was first ascertained that this was not the work of khader mia sahib or virashami naikar both feared their ability to swallow sheep's whole surely a tiger was work the villagers ran to inform the maharaja the maharaja announced a 3 year exemption from all taxes for that village and set out on a hunt at once so in that area it was believed that khader mia sahib and veera shami naikar uh, they were supposed to swallow the sheep but at this time since the sheep were disappearing from the hill top so this may be uh, this might not be their work so it can be assumed that the tiger is at work these sheep were being killed by the tiger so this happy news was soon given to the king and the king at once announced an exemption of taxes to the whole village as a reward and at once he started set out his journey for uh, killing the tiger the tiger was not easily found it seems as if it had wantonly hid itself in order to flout the maharaja's will but as the king wandered through the deep forest the tiger was found nowhere it seems that the tiger itself was trying to hid he are trying to save himself from the king and this and thus he was creating uh, the king king's fury as the days passed the maharaja's fury and obstinacy mounted alarmingly many officers lost their jobs but as king has passed many days wandering in the forest he became much disturbed and out of rage he dismissed many officials one day when his rage was at its height the maharaja called drivan and ordered him to double the land tax forthwith and again after few days the king out of his fury called for divan and ordered him to uh increase the revenue tax double the revenue tax uh throughout his kingdom the people will become discontented then our state too will fall a prey to the indian national congress now divan you realize that if the taxes will be doubled then the subjects of the kingdom will become discontented and again we will be prey to the indian national congress so as we have seen that indian national congress was uh, formed as a pressure group in 1985 with objective of uh, demanding rights for the indian people similarly divan realized that if uh, such extra burden of taxes will be imposed on the people then definitely uh, indian national congress will also object will also resist our decision in that case you may resign from your post said the king and now the king was so much disturbed that he even warned the king that if he will not follow his order then he may leave the job 
The Diwan went home, convinced that if Maharajas did not find the tiger soon, the result could be catastrophic. He felt life returning to him only when he saw the tiger, which had been brought from the People's Park in Madras and kept hidden in his house. Now, Diwan had realized that if Maharaja did not get the tiger soon or if he failed to achieve his uh, ambition of killing the hundred tiger then definitely the result will be very disastrous for him as well as for his kingdom but the one felt very relaxed when he knew that uh, there was a tiger in people's park in madras which he brought home from there and hid it in his house. At midnight, when the town slept in his peace, the Diwan and his aged wife dragged the tiger to the car and sobbed it into the seat. The Diwan himself drove the car straight to the forest where the Maharaja was hunting. So at the dead night, at the midnight, both Diwan and his wife, they secretly put the tiger in their cars and went straight into the forest around the area where the king was wandering for hunting a tiger. When they reached the forest, the tiger launched its satyagra and refused to get out of the car. But when Diwan reached in the forest and when they were dragging out the tiger from their car he was resisting because the tiger had already uh, realized his approaching death so he refused to come out of the car the divan was thoroughly exhausted in his effort to haul the beast out of the car and posed it down to the ground but divan and his wife they put all their efforts to drag to pull the tiger out of their car and they pushed it down to the ground. On the following day, the same old tiger wandered into Maharaja's presence and stood as if in humble supplication. Master, what do you command of me? But the next day, when the tiger was wandering in the forest, he happened to encounter he happened to come in front of the tiger but the tiger did not move and he very humbly uh, requested the king that master what do you command of me he was just expecting the commands he just wanted to follow the commands of the king but it was with boundless joy that Maharaja took careful aim at the beast. The tiger fell in crumbed heap. But now the Maharaja, out of his joy, lost his emotions and carefully aimed at the tiger and very soon the tiger lay down like a heap, or like a crumpled heap on the ground. I have killed the hundred tiger. My woe has been fulfilled. The Maharaja was overcome with elation. Now the tiger, now the king shouted loudly with elation, with joy that he had killed the hundred tiger. He has fulfilled his promise. Ordering the tiger to be brought to the capital in grand procession, the Maharaja hastened away in his car. And now, the king ordered his officials and hunters to bring the tiger in a grain procession to his capital and he instantly went back to his house. After the Maharaja left, the hunters went to take a close look at the tiger. The tiger looked back at them rolling his, its eyes in bafflement. Now, as the king went away, the hunters they went close to the tiger 
and then they realized that the tiger was not killed the man realized that tiger was not dead the bullet had missed it it had fainted from the shock of the bullet whizzing past then the hunters realized that the king might have missed his aim and the tiger fainted due to the loud loud sound of the bullet and it happened in the same way as we have seen in our 10th class uh of about the lesion mrs pegletite's tiger so similar is the circumstances happening here here also the tiger was not killed but fainted due to the loud sound of the bullet the hunters wondered what they should do they decided that maharaja must not come to know that he had missed his target now the hunters decided to conceal the secret and they did not allow this news to uh come to the ears of the king and then they decided to kill the tiger one of the hunter took aim of from a distance of 1 foot and shot the tiger this time he killed it without missing his mark now the hunter took very precise aim of the tiger and shot it dead and this secret was completely concealed by those hunters then as commanded by the king the dead tiger was taken in procession through the town and buried a tomb was erected over it and then they followed the orders of the king and this uh, tiger was taken in grand procession through the streets of the capital and then he was buried uh outside of the town and a tomb was erected over his body and it might uh possible that king had engraved some of the words like the hundred tiger or his victory or the story of his victory or how he uh defeat the death such sentences might have written on the tomb a few days later the maharaja's son third birthday was celebrated until then maharaja had given his entire mind over the tiger hunting he had had no time to spare for the crown prince but now the king turned his attention to the child he wished to give him some special gift on his birthday so he went to the shopping center in pratibandapuram and searched every shop but couldn't find anything suitable finally he spotted a wooden tiger in a toy shop and decided it was the perfect gift so now the king has decided to celebrate his son's third birthday and so far we have seen that king was so busy in achieving his goal in hunting only so he never took care of his children his child now he wanted to celebrate his third birth- birthday with full enthusiasm and so uh, he went to the toy shop and wanted to search some special gift for his child but after uh exploring many shops he did not find any suitable gift for his child finally he spotted a wooden tiger in a toy shop and decided it was the perfect gift and as he was a uh, searching gift in a toy shop so he come across a wooden tiger and so he decided to buy that a uh, wooden tiger to his uh son as a birthday gift the wooden tiger cost only 2 annas and a quarter 
but the shopkeeper knew that if he quoted such a low price to the maharaja he would be punished under the rules of emergency so he said your majesty this is an extremely rare example of craftsmanship a bargain at 300 rupees so now when the king liked the tiger wooden tiger then the shopkeeper he tried to conceal the real uh, cost of the toy its cost was only 2 anna and a quarter but the shopkeeper very cunningly told the king that it was its it was a rare example of craftsmanship and he had bought it for 300 rupees very good let this be your offering to the crown prince on his birthday said the king and took it away with him and the king itself was very cunning very clever so he said that okay let it be a gift from your side to the crown prince and the king went away without paying for the toy one on that day father and son played with that tiny little wooden tiger and on the birthday after giving this gift to his son both the father and the son they played with this wooden uh, tiger it had been carved by an unskilled carpenter its surface was rough tiny slivers of wooden stood up like quills all over it but as this toy was made by an unskilled tiger so unskilled carpenter so its surfaces were rough and slivers like quills were of wood stood up all over it one of those slivers pierced the maharaja's right hand he pulled it out with his left hand and continued to play with the prince but as the king was playing with the toy one of the slivers pierced into his right hand but at that time the king did not realize the seriousness of this event and he started uh, continued to play with his son the next day infection flared into the maharaja's right hand in four days it developed into a separating sore which spread all over the arm but next day the infection flared into maharaja's right hand the infection increased and within 4 days it developed into a painful sore and which spread all over his arm three famous surgeons were brought in from madras and then uh, realizing the emergency three famous surgeons were called brought in from madras after holding a consultants they decided to operate the operation took place so then these three surgeons they uh consulted with each other and finally they decided that uh, king's arm would be operated and the operation they started the operation and uh the three surgeons who performed it came out of the theater and announced the operation was successful the maharaja is dead and after performing the successful operation all the three surgeons they came out of the operation theater and declared that the operation was successful but the king was dead so at it is it is said that too many cooks spoil the food similarly these three surgeons they operated the maharaj j arm very successfully but the tiger met his death as per the prophecy so finally the prophecy met by the astrologer comes true in this manner the hundred tiger took its final revenge upon the tiger king and thus we can say uh, we can see that how the hundred tiger 
took its final revenge upon the king and finally the king lost his life so throughout the lesson we have seen how even the shopkeeper divan uh, they were not faithful to the king many times they too uh, tried to cheat the king uh thus we can see that death is inevitable how powerful any person may be but no one can go beyond the death so death is the ultimate end of an individual who has taken birth on this planet so that's end of the final video and for your assessment please explore link in the description box till then goodbye take care and thanks for watching oh.